and welcome to the Twilight Zone, the zone where the unknown is made known with stories involving real people and real places. On Revelation TV, the finest. If you're searching for how to master and flow in the supernatural, this is a program for you. So, call anyone you know, especially the unbeliever, who wants to make sense of the supernatural to tune in right now. Hello and welcome to the Twilight Zone, the zone where the unknown is made known. And with me as usual on this program is our beautiful Lady Sylvia. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Lady of the Manor. Yes, gentleman of the manor, Lord of the Manor. Fantastic. You're good. <laughs> now I've got said, your title for yeah. you. <laughs> yes, the Bible says Sarah called him. Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord of the Manor. She's getting, she's getting well trained. <laughs> so how are you today? Very good, very good. We thank God for this opportunity. We thank God for life. Amen. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, our special guest today is not new to many of you on the channel because the first time he appeared on this program, he caused a stir because he came with a prophecy for this nation, a prophecy that was sent to the Queen of England. She responded and then... She passed the message to the Archbishop of Canterbury at that time, a gentleman called Ron William, if I can call him gentleman. And he said it wasn't within his remit to do anything about it. Can you imagine? Well, the prophet is back with us in the studio today, and he's by the name Prophet Johnson Akinfenwa of a ministry known as Voice of Prophecy International Outreach. Welcome to the program, man of God. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Yemi and Pastor Sylvia. God bless you. I'm very glad that you are able to bring me back again to feature on this special television, apostolic uh, television, because right from their, its, uh, its inception, it has been apostolic and it's done a great job all over. So I'm very grateful and I really want to appreciate you and the entire you know, organization, Revelation TV. Thanks Amen. so much. Yes. Amen. Thanks Thank for you. being able to actually fly out. We do a lot of interviews on Skype, <laughs> but you're able to come over and experience our lovely weather. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, really enjoying it. So it's, the open heaven is here. Amen. Open heaven, <laughs> yes. Because I told him, I said, here, we don't have clouds in the sky to yes. block the prayers. So when you pray, it goes straight through because we got open heaven. That's right. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Uh, We're honored you. and privileged to have you here. Thank you. But the topic of today is what is the devil's agenda against Christians, especially in, in Europe, in England, in UK, in Europe, and the Western world? And the question we put is again is, is the agenda of the enemy working? So man of God, I remember last time when you came, in our discussions on that program, you dropped something, and I picked it, that in your research, God told you to go and research into the Christian heritage of the United Kingdom. And in doing so, you came across two names of two people that were crucial to the enemy using to destabilize and eradicate Christianity from the United Kingdom. So, but, so, but let us start first, that, you know, uh, from, you know, uh, to, before I explain this very controversial issue, you know, we need to know the difference between Christianity and secularism. What, you know, can you tell us the difference between these two, please? Uh, thank you very much for such a question. There are differences between the two of them. The kingdom of God is about Jesus Christ. It's about having, uh, especially Christianity, you know, is about having direct relationship with God, but through Jesus Christ. You know, Christianity is about bringing life, you know, the life that the enemy, Satan, has taken away. So Jesus Christ came to bring that life, but not without his blood. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary in order to bring redemption to humanity, bringing us back, normalizing our relationship with God, which we have lost in the Garden of Eden through the disobedience of Adam and Eve. That is what Christianity is all about. It's about the kingdom of God. But on the other, on the other hand, secularism is an agenda of Satan. 
you know, it has been pre-planned. And I want to say this, secularism is something that began in the Garden of Eden, and I will tell you the reason why. It is, a, it is an ideology that get the focus of man away from God. Because people need to understand the better, you know, it's, it's an agenda, it's a philosophy or ideology that shift away man's focus from God and shift, you know, man's focus on himself. Oh, yes. That you don't need to worry about this so-called God, but you can shift your attention to yourself. You can do it yourself instead of obeying God. That was where secularism started. And in every generation, Satan is using different means to bring it across based upon that generation, based upon the dispensation. So it's from the pit of hell, I want to say, because it is designed to rebel, it is designed by Satan so that man can rebel constantly against the plan and purpose of God. That is the difference between Christianity and secularism. And this is what has been happening globally, especially in the Western world. So this is where they want to separate the church from the state. That that is the, that is exactly we are going to we are going to get to some something like that. That's why they want to separate the church. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 from the state, mm -hmm. so that at least it will be easy for that agenda to be followed through. That's right. So the question is, how did this start? You know, this um, and who is responsible for this socio-political ideology designed to establish a godless society? Because yeah. in last time you came, you said there were two people. Important. My wife and I did a program about one of them, but today you're here to now break it down even better. So can you share with us how it started and who are these guys who are responsible for this operation? Yes, th this, this, this is very key, and thank you for that particular question. In my research, because I mentioned the other time I came that when I got to this nation about 30 years ago, the Lord spoke to me that, you no, know, because of the assignment, prophetic assignment I have for you, you know, I want you to give your time to study church history. Because that they, yeah, as a prophet and prophetic intercession, the focus of your assignment as a prophet and prophetic intercession is to pray in order to bring the nation back to their Christian heritage. So I knew that from the beginning, it's about you have been commissioned to pray prophetically to bring you know, uh, the, the, this nation back to their heritage. And he gave the, the passage of Genesis 26. Mm -hmm. When you know, Isaac got into trouble and he was about to begin to seek for help somewhere else, Egypt, God said, no, don't go. This land I've covenanted with your father, you know, with that you will inherit it. So the Bible now said, and Isaac went and revisited and redug the well that his father Abraham had dug before. That is our challenge here in this nation. Our, the well of our founding father, the well of righteousness, justice, equity, fairness, you know, taking care of the poor and especially sound doctrinal and apostolic teaching. That is lost here. You know, so an enemy really knew that. So in my research, I discovered two people who are, who are responsible to building a secular, godless nation. Mm. One of them was the man called George Jacob Oliok. He was born in Birmingham and uh, at his early age, he was a very prominent somebody who loved the Lord. He was a Sunday school teacher. In, you know, they invite him, either Reformed Church, Methodist, they will invite this guy to deliver the message about, you know, a, a, about, uh, about Jesus Christ, salvation and redemption. Until such a time when he got fed up. That I mean, other churches, only what they do is to focus on imaginary kind of life after death but not realizing that the Bible should be interpreted, translated to address the issue of humanity yeah. so that we can influence them. So he got disillusioned, you know, and that really made him to 
you know, say, well, if, if, if that is only what Christianity is all about, preaching about uh, invisible God only, life after them, we are not using the Bible to transform the life of people, then I don't think. So from there, as a result of that, he couldn't see anybody to really cancel him against that. Mm -hmm. So he was lured into becoming atheist. So we're going to talk about that wow. sometime. The second person that, that caused this trouble, according to my research, is a woman called Alice Bailey. Alice Bailey also was a prominent believer, a woman. She was born in Manchester, <laughs> you know, prominent, well-versed in the scripture. In fact, at age 22, it, she decided actually to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And she became a missionary with British Army and YMCA. You know, she traveled to India as a missionary, be walking the passion for Christ, burning, you know, at such an age. That was where she met her husband to be at that time, warm, you know, ever, uh, some, something, uh, Will, uh, yeah, William Evan or something like that. You know, and they married, they got married in there. So, and because of the turbulent, after that, after they married, the marriage didn't work very well with three, three daughters. So after that turbulent experience, you know, they, to Africa because he married a man of God, a reverend in Episcopal Church in America. So, and as a result of that, he was so bitter in that marriage. And he said, no, I don't think I can go more. So from there also, why she was also looking for comfort, you know, because of the hurt sustained as a result of turbulent marriage, she doubled into, she got a book called Esoteric Book. That is the book on uh, occultism and witchcraft. And that book changed everything because the spirit, as she was reading that book, I read that she left devotional meditation in the Bible. She now jumped to that because the spirit in that esoteric book, Koti book, actually was having influence in her until the enemy lay hold on her. Well. So the two guys, you know, that Satan pick up to really get secular agenda into place here and globally, they were people who knew the Bible they knew Jesus, but they backslid it. Wow. wow. And the husband's name that you're trying to remember is Walter Evans. Walter Evans. <laughs> yes, Walter yes, Evans. Evans. And, uh, you know, it's just so sad that these guys knew the gospel, but they, were, they saw that the church, as it's happening even today, the church is spending money on buildings, on telling people when you die, you go to heaven. But the poor in the church, the widow in the church yeah. has been neglected. Mm -hmm. And that's what drove them out. Yeah. But then on the other hand... And sound doctrine as worse. <laughs> yes, that's right. And on the other hand, you have uh, churches like the Salvation Army who have decided, okay, we're going to look after the poor, but there's no spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, you, and there's an example in the Bible when even the apostles were busy serving food and looking after the poor, yeah. until the Lord woke them up. He, he rebuked them. Say, I call you to the ministry of prayer and, and, and the word. Say, why, why are you just giving though? They say, the, the Sahendrin or the Jewish uh, widow is, uh, oh, our gyro is, is, uh, is, is far less than the Grecian one. And they were just argument. And uh, it, it, it got to a point when the disciples were dis, 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 distracted and the Holy Spirit has to challenge them. I didn't call you for this. Give this kind of social business to people in the church. They can run with it. That was the reason why seven deacons were ordained, to take care of all these, um, what we call in our own day, um, social welfare. Social, <laughs> yes, <laughs> social welfare. welfare, you know, uh, and, and things like that. It has been, but God wants to make sure we focus on the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, because that is where everything stems out. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now, how did the activities of these two people impact the nations to the point of today, we're seeing strange things happen mm. in our lifetime. Things that the Bible prophesied that we thought is going to be maybe a thousand years from now, but happening right now. How come? Uh, thank you. I just want to go a little bit. Uh, how come? But I want to also say something about the reason why Satan targeted these two people here. Uh, the Alice Bailey and George Oleo. Satan realized that apart from the Jerusalem Church, Apostolic Church, there is no any other nation that affected, that impacted the world in the area of world evangelization and mission than United Kingdom. Yeah. Our founding father, when they conquered their Jerusalem, their Jerusalem happened to be here, the United Kingdom, they said, wow, 
since we have conquered Jerusalem, the Christian ethos, the Christian principle, everything is now being established. The foundation of our law was actually biblical. Yes. Then we can conquer the whole world. That's how they began to break out into mission activities mm -hmm. all over. About two thirds of the planet are they evangelized them up and down. And as a result of that, Satan was angry that this nation did disturb me so much. It's the nation that really, you know, took people that have held bound across different nations with their gospel we are preaching. It took them off my domain. So I was looking for a time when he would deal with a, a United Kingdom. When he saw two prominent, you know, Bible-believing Christians who backslid it, he now said, this, these are the right guy. Mm -hmm. These are going to be my real arrow. And he picked Georgi Oliyuk at that time. He was young, vibrant, you know, in, in the 18th century. Uh, but at a point, you know, there was a movement they called the movement of reasoning. You know, that time, the movement of reasoning was established because they said they, they did not want people to believe that Bible is the authentic and it is the absolute truth. Mm. People of God, Christian, we need to understand this. Satan has been walking centuries ago while we are still thinking, what is he doing? He has, he has seen that if we can do something, um, a, a kind of ideology that will distract them, they can actually you know, wipe away Christianity. So he engaged this man, you know, the age of reasoning, then from there, that age of reasoning movement translated to what we call the association of atheists. Mm. You know, so the association of it is, and they saw him as a young, vibrant guy, agile, active. You know, and please, I want to say this, especially to all of us who are church leaders. Let us pay attention to raise up our young people. Yeah. This is their generation. This is not our generation. We are to nurture them. We are to mentor them. They saw that quality in Georgie Olio. And Satan had also been monitoring him at such a point when he, re he was as, as an atheist, he began to think that if there could be an ideology that will do everything, isolate the heart of men mm -hmm. you know, from God, he said that will be the right thing. So he ventured and he discovered in the dictionary the word secular. And when he left, he said, ah, wow, I can work with this. Mm. Because secular, when you look at secular, because all of us, oh, this is a secular state. Please, don't just take it verbatim like this, a secular state. We have been hanging on that word. It's a bad word. Secular or secularism means hatred against God, rebellion against God. Secularism means doing things without involving God, mm. building a community and nation that we have not have respect for God, yeah. building a community and family that we hate God and take less interest in anything spiritual, especially Christian religion. Yeah. Satan doesn't bother about other religion. There's only one religion that Satan bothers about, and that is Christianity, because he knows that it is crazy. It is true that that he was. They you know, disempowered on the cross by what Jesus Christ did. Anybody who attempt to move into that way. And this nation, we have moved so much into that. He saw it and like that. Secondly, please. Secondly, another reason why he was angry with this nation is because uh, about 400 years ago, there was a deluge of the truth of the word of God, of the water of the word of God that came out of this nation through the translation of the Bible. Wow. It was only Catholic that have access to understand the, the Bible, either in Latin or by Greek. So it was con confined to them. Satan deliberately confined it to the Catholic. They are the ones that can read the, in, in Latin or in Greek, read that. So but over 400 years ago, God did something through this. God breathed upon the language of English, the breath of the Holy Spirit was so strong upon it. So when that Bible was translated into English, it gave the whole world access to easily get and read Bible. Because in those days, you can't just read Bible unless you get permission from vicar or priest or Catholic priest. They, they can burn you alive. And that's the reason why people like uh, Tinde, 
They burn them. That, ah, you want to translate Bible to English to make the word of God, the word of truth accessible to the people. They burn this man to death. Why? Because they did not, Satan did not want the truth to go viral. But thank God, this is our nation. Yeah. This is our beloved nation. Over 400 years ago, King James Version summoned 47 Bible scholars to translate this thing so that at least the word of God, the word of truth, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ can go viral across the nation. Those are two reasons because I need to highlight the reasons yes. why Satan is saying rage against yeah. this particular. Wow. You know, <clears throat> so these two people they play important. So uh, Georgie only you now lay upon the word secular. And I've, I've written some future of um, you no know, secular future. It's it's a building a nation a community where that we never allow God to interfere in the running of that society or running of that one, you will, re, you will agree with me that that's exactly what happened. So he now define it and move it from adjective and translate it to noun, secularism. And he now put under it that under secularism, if we can privatize Christianity and make sure it is only, and make sure that government will have access to education, we have access to science, we have access to politics, we have access and, and block out that. That was the reason why secularism came on, and that was the intention. Since then, when they say we are secular state, people of God, we that is what it means. And that has been running from 60 years now. So those who are born below 60, they never have encounter with, their generation has not have encounter with Christ. <laughs> There's a quotation here from him, yeah. which I want to read out. He says, he believed that secularism will be a good alternative to Christianity. Mm -hmm. In order for this to happen, he believed that secularism will make Christianity to become a private affair to individuals. And some Christians have bought into that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the your church. Christianity should be your own private issue. issue. <laughs> it's not anything to do with anybody. Mm. Christians. Yeah. And he said, um, it, 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 it will be an individual affair. But the state will control education which is happening now, yeah. science, mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. economy, yeah. and to ensure that those spheres are devoid of religious or Christian dictate. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, in order to achieve this, he proposed that government should take it on board to organize the society so as to improve the material welfare of humanity and give everyone the right to live their own life, lives without religious interference. Hey. <laughs> That's why, because the social welfare state started. Oh, yeah. the UK, even till today, yeah. A migrant comes into town, here is money, yeah. here is accommodation. We care, and we don't need God to care for the people. Yeah. But they also try to promote religious tolerance. But it's not the religious tolerance that we think it is. No, it's not, it's not religious tolerance yes. that we think about. That's it. right, yeah. Uh, because we are go yeah, the second, the second lady, Alice Bailey, this yeah. is what they, he wrapped it under religious tolerance. And you, there's a particular thing that is now featured, building all-inclusive church. Mm, mm. So they are using secular terminology, yes. secular English, and the amazing thing is that something happened during the era of Prime Minister Tony Blair. Now, he was the one that, that really did something under him, they brought the law of multi-faith system. So, and the archbishop at that time, because it was not a reborn, sorry, I don't want to say no, but archbishop Ruan William was a Libra archbishop. Yeah. So it was easy for the prime minister, Tony Blair, to use that mm. to actually put the agenda of multi-faith. So at that time, because what I read in my study, I discovered they have been trying as much as possible to make sure Christianity will not be seen as supreme over every other yeah. religion since yeah. 18th century. Mm. Now they are saying that the only way to do that is to create interfaith mm. and make Christian to be at par yeah. with other religion. So when, you, when they are talking of multi-faith, that's secular, but they know how to wrap it mm -hmm. under a policy. That's why during his, oh, during his time, uh, 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 that was promoted, and during the time of Golden Brown, uh, Tony Blair, they promoted that kind of thing that we're having in Taffy. Even many pastors in my borough, I didn't join it because I knew where it's coming from. Why should I sit down be the cause of Hinduism and uh, say because of in Taffy? We don't hate people, please. We, it is an offense for any Christian to hate anybody because of their religious inclination. Jesus loves and we have to love because we are human beings. 
and we are created in the image of God. So cre religion should not be something that will make me to hate you. Mm -hmm. We just have to pray the gospel, pray that God will bring them to the knowledge. But that's interfaith. That's why we hear sometimes when they say, oh, maybe I will, uh, I, I will not be a defender of faith or but faith. faith yeah, that's where that faith. thing was rooted yeah. out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Even yesterday, apparently, Prince Charles in the church gathered all the different faiths to come and talk, something his mother would not Never have done. Do. Yeah because the mother was a full Christian yes. and she made sure the services about anything she does was Christian. Yeah. But in his case, yeah. he allowed the Hindu priests, yeah. the Buddhist priests, mm -hmm. all of them, which means that he's bought into the idea. Of course. Those are the feature of secularism we are talking about. When we talk about, because people still, I've been in some places for prayer meeting, they are still saying, oh, because this is a Christian nation. But my spirit doesn't agree, it's not a Christian nation. Historically, it's a Christian nation. You can't tell me that it's a Christian nation when all the secular feature, godlessness, mm. hatred against God, rebellion against God, have been put in place even as part of our law for the past five, over 50 years. Yeah. So which means this generation of 50, 60 years below, they have not encountered God. They have not seen revival in the recent of it. My, one of my sons took me on, on that and said, that, why are you saying that they, they, this is a Christian nation? I said, yeah, he said, no. He said, because our generation, we have not encountered God. Mm. You are talking about our founding father. Every time you will say you pray because of our founding father, they said that, please, we want to see God ourselves in our generation. And that is the reason why every, any prime minister be, who come be, below either around 55 or below 60, they grew up under secular education. Wow. That's why whenever they come, they run secular law. Wow. Because they never have encountered <laughs> revival. There's something I need to read out, yeah, you know, to save us time. It's the features of a secular society through government policies. All right. Yeah. These secular features to erase Christian culture in the society include the following. Government or government officials should refrain from publicly identifying with other religions, especially Christian religion. Can, can you see we are seeing that? Yes. Our educational system should not have any affinity to Christian and any other religion. Yes, that's a secular feature. Government or nation acti national activities reflect worldly as opposed to sacred things. Yeah. The state should not identify with Christianity as a national religion, but rather to declare ourselves as a multi-faith hey, nation. Yeah. That is what we're talking about. <laughs> the training of secular clerics by the Church of England, Episcopal and other uh, state churches who are not bound by any religious vow to a monastic order in the nation. Were well, you surprised at the contention going on? Because they have trained secular clerics. <laughs> who are at the bishop at this moment or Rick Vicar all yeah, over. Because they studied theology from yeah. university. Yeah. Because they got a degree, yeah. they trained them to go into to, the to go into the system. It's not that they were called. Mm -hmm. They were just it was just it's just their occupation. Yeah. They don't understand it's a job. calling. It's a, it's a, job. a job. That's the problem we have. Yeah. We and, have yeah. <laughs> and and even so, I mean like I remember I was listening, I wanted to study church history. So I went online and I saw something from Yale University. So I started, you know, and then when it got to the miracles of Jesus, the guy wasn't saying what I thought he should be saying. Like, this is a Bible teacher and he should be, you know, endorsing these miracles. Yeah. But he was like trying to make them sound like they may not have happened. It was just like, it. and then, then later on, I discovered that this guy wasn't even a Christian. He was compl something completely different. And I'm thinking, he's not even a Christian. He's not born again. Mm. He has his own lifestyle that he's leading. And he's teaching theology in a university That's like it. Yale. That is the reason why many people who carried you know, fire of the Holy Ghost to seminary or mm. cemetery, no, seminary. <laughs> <laughs> they carry it to go and study. They carry fire to enroll there. By the time they came out, they became so dead. Yeah. Yeah. That is the problem that we're having in the church today. The it, fire. Is it's not even the church alone <laughs> because I have a classmate. He went to study in, in Florida. He said his American lecturer told him, I think you, you're good to study theology. He was a Muslim. <laughs> okay. To study theology. Even though he was a Muslim? Even though he was a Muslim. Yeah. So he studied theology, and today he's on the same platform with me. He would quote a bit of Christianity, a bit of Islam, yeah. a bit of Hindu. So to him, he's yeah. just a nice guy. A nice yes. guy. <laughs> yes. I, well, I met a white witch, the one that I met that I had an encounter with, is into witchcraft, is a, and he studied theology as well. That's right. So I can but number six here, 
infiltration of Bible colleges with secular philosophy and world religions mm. as part of the syllabus. That's what we are saying. It, that, you know why that happened? Uh, in, my, in my study, I discovered after the Second World War, there are some men who really want to study uh, uh, theology. Yeah. They wanted to go, go for it, you know. But they, in America, they said that if you are going to study theology, you know, they have to bring in secular ideology into it, or else you will not get bustry. Wow. They tie it to that. Okay, you want to study Bible? It's not going to be pure Bible, but you are going to. They are. They, are, they need to bring their various religion into the syllabus mm -hmm. of theology yeah. or of Bible study. So that is where the problems that Paganism has been part of theological program because if you want to get money of as a scholarship to go to. You have to. So that they, they have been building secular clerics right from that. But if you don't go through history, we will not know understand yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. Then number seven, the establishment of secular courts and the training of secular or liberal judges, yeah. making it difficult for those who still hold on to traditional Christian values to win their cases before wow. a liberal judge. That's what I discovered. So we have, we have secular judges, and that's why it's getting tougher when you carry uh, certain cases to before the judge. They say, once it, they know that it has Christian connotation, you won't win the case. And we have that persecution I've just started. They've trained secular judges, secular clerics, secular barristers, and because they, they, they went through secular education. Wow. <laughs> Any aspect of the state institution will not be within the control of the church. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a political ideology that occurs slowly for a long period of time. Okay. The state schools must run with secular liberal syllabus, with teachers with secular liberal educational orientation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not for f not focusing on anything spiritual. Emphasis should be focused on the affairs of the present world. Nothing related to holy or sacred thing, but worldly. That's, that's yeah. That's what I discover as the feature of secularism in my study. You know, so can you can you see that now? All those things have been entrenched for over for fifty years. Mm. We've been secular, not a Christian nation. Historically, we are Christian. People need to stop that. Yeah. The, the reason, sir, Pastor Yemi, where we are trying to bring this so that when we are praying, we will know that we have problem. Yeah. Because it will be a kind of denier if we say it's still a Christian nation. Instead of saying, look, God, we've missed the mark. We are no more Christian, but we want it back. And Jesus is able to do that. Through prayer, I believe it can be back. But we need to... That denier, we need to stop living in denier of the truth that this is no more a Christian wow. nation. But it's a, it's a lot of prayer because of where we are now. <laughs> we've gone so far down the road that, that there's a lot but of prayer. But with God, prayer, with God, all with the things. power of the wow. cross, we are coming all vehemently, militantly against the power. We are to destroy, yes. you know. And I'm sorry, so, oh, that's, that's all right. You know, when the sons of God manifest, we are to destroy the works of the, the devil. devil. Mm -hmm. We are manifesting, mm -hmm. we are coming. Then that leads me to the Alice Bailey's 10-point plan, a 10-point strategy to destroy Christianity and Judeo-Christian values. Now, let me take them one after the other. We'll go through them quickly. Time is flying. <laughs> she says, number one, take God and prayer out of the education system. That, that, so, sorry, sir. If, if, if we look at that alone, Satan knows that the most potent weapon that Christian has is right. prayer. The first thing that Satan to, told uh, Alice Bailey is that once the prayer is out mm -hmm. of school and Christian, that is the end of it. Wow. <laughs> and we all used to start school with assembly. It assembly was in our days, we, it, uh, we have to start school with... You sing with, hymns, yeah, you, you have sing assembly. Hymns, a <laughs> Every it's day. A prayer. And then, and remember, a lot of these schools that are involved in this thing, they are Church of England schools, they are Christian of schools yeah. that don't do them anymore. Yeah. Number two, reduce parental authority over the children. Yeah, what we see, what we value is family institution yeah. of, 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 of marriage and family. He said, destroy that one. Then you will, you will train it, you will establish a godless nation. You tear. They've turned that apart. But, but, but Pastor Yemi, uh, uh, Pastor Sibi, listen to this. When he started with Lord Downing's law, when he started with uh, you can have cohabit marriage, that was where the tearing apart of family started years ago. From there, from there, today they've legislated that you can have a no-fault divorce. 
You can marry today and divorce tomorrow before you have to look for a fault, mm -hmm. a reason why you divorce. Mm -hmm. But in our secular law today, in order to, the, to see that they have torn apart the family value, you can divorce at any time. You don't need to give any reason why you throw your wife or your husband out. Wow. And number three, he said, destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. <laughs> that, 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 that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Number four, if sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. Yeah, that is it. I could remember, sorry to come in, when any time your child is uh, about 13 years old, NHS will send a particular letter that now that you are a teenager, uh, if, you can, if you are sexually active or something like that, you don't need to tell your mom that you want to abort wow. pregnancy. So from that moment in, they say, your, your parents shouldn't know about all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. we, they will tell you where to get pill and all the, the injection and all those things. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? At 13. At 13, yes. I received the letter whenever, whether boy or girl, they will send that letter. Sometimes it get to my, got to my hand and I look at it and say, can you imagine? So that, that's, it, that's it there, it's there. Wow. And number five says, make divorce easy and legal. Uh, yeah, we free we've, we've, people from the yeah. concept of marriage, marriage for life. For life. Hey, we've done that already. We've done that. It's, it's, it's a legal thing in our law now. No wow. reason, just and, divorce. And now even people, couples that are living together have the same rights as a married couple. In fact, they get more money. They get more help, assistance from the government, <laughs> forcing people who are married to even lie that they're not married. Yeah, exactly. That, that's going on on benefits. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. Number six, you can just touch this briefly, it says make homosexuality an alternative lifestyle. No, we, we, we don't need him to talk more now. And fun. number seven, he said debase art, make it run mad. Oh, yeah, that one is serious. In our fashion world, you see oh, yeah. kind of fashion. Oh. We don't know whether people delay put on in because you see women with, you know, the top, top places everywhere. The, 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 I mean, out in the churches, that, that my concern is not the church. The church has become worldly now. Mm. And, and you see, even when you see some of our younger ones, they put rag as the trousers. You know those jeans that were that torn apart and all those things. Mm -hmm. And I in my study of the Bible, when you look at how much time God gave to the design of priestly garment, you'll be shocked that we need to be decent whenever we want to appear before God. Mm. He said, Exodus chapter 28, verse 2, he said, if anybody wants to appear before me, you must dress with a kind of dress that gives me glory and beauty. Mm. It's no more on the platform today. That's mm. right. And it's no more in the church today. Wow. That's right. People need to go and study and know the, the design. We have to be decent and put on something yeah. decent and appear. Yeah. Not just all this. I, I don't have anything, but it's like you will see the type of a lady, worship leader coming out. In fact, there are some apostles and all the, or, or, or some men of God, prominent ones. They are wearing tattered and torn apart jeans and they are, and you begin to, for what reason? Mm. Because that's just. You know, that's why I respect the Jewish people so <laughs> No matter how the fashion across the whole world changes, it's their long black coat, <laughs> white shirt, top hat, <laughs> and the women too. Yeah. Long outfit, black shoes, end of story. <laughs> and those ones who we think don't look fashionable, yeah. they control the wealth of the whole world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but some Christians would argue that, oh, if you don't dress like that, you have to dress like that to bring the worldly people into the church. Why should we? That is what they would argue. That is the job of the Holy Spirit to convict. <laughs> you can't, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts people to give their life to Jesus. Mm. Wrong, it's not, don't do mechanical things to win souls. <laughs> and number eight, say so use media to promote and change mindsets. Mm. And, you know, I've, we've seen programs that shocked me. Yeah. There was one on BBC or so some time ago, um, looking beautiful naked. Live on television. Secular. That's what Satan dictated to Alice Bailey. And that's what you are reading now. And then oh. number, yeah, number nine says, create an interfaith okay. movement. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I mentioned. But that's, that's the, but that's the strange thing, because like you said, pastors like yourself, are joining these movements. Oh, big big time. pastors from, from, from all over the world. Yeah, they put the ecumenical interface. They They're put big name on Turia. They are moving to play to the hand of the devil. What is ecumenical? But don't they know this? Well, I don't know. I pray that the Holy Spirit will work in us. We, we intensify his activity in all of us who are in the leadership. So yeah. as to come back to the path of righteousness. Because they're using the United Nations. 
you know, and the United Nations is, is giving people ambassadors, uh, ship ambassadors of, of peace, ambassadors of peace, and, and all uh, this. The, is, the root is Alice Bailey. The root uh, is Alice Bailey because when Satan gave this thing to Alice Bailey, he actually said he should charter it under United Nations. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, this thing is coming from you know, the first thing said now they, they send the force to House of Parliament, House of Lords in UK. This thing charter. And this is about 50 or 60, about six, around 60 years ago, that this should be the basis of secular and liberal world. And they have been putting this thing into law wow. for all these years. Yeah. Number 10, it says, get governments to make all these laws and get the church to endorse. Those. Why not Hindu? Why not uh, Islam? Why not? Why did Satan specifically say the, the church. church should be compelled to endorse this thing? Why? Wow. That shows something. And that's what the <laughs> That's the enemy we need. Content against the church is agreeing to all. No, the church is uh, yes, it's agreeing to this. It's agreeing to this thing. That is it. Satan give. I pray that Jesus Christ, you will give believer a strategy. I pray oh, further over Wales, Scotland. There are people that God will give so strategy to counter all this thing. I believe it, and we are into it as we pray. Amen. There are strategy to destroy this kind of thing. And we are going to do prayer and the authentic word of God. We can, we can reverse all these things. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> yes, I have no doubt in my mind. If God wants to revive a nation, there's no demon from the pits of hell that mm. can slow him. No. Even in the book of Acts, the devil was going to use Sapphira and Ananias to stop a revival. Yeah. God took them out immediately. Completely. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord came upon the church yeah. and the church increased in number. It yes. grew in number yes. phenomenally. Yes. Normally when someone dies in the church, everyone should run away. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. But the church grew because the power of God was at play. And it was the only way to create holy fear. It was. Yes. And you know, recently there has been a contentious issue in the Church of England regarding the solemnization of gay marriage. So what do you think? Because I've seen so many materials on YouTube, arguments for and arguments against. You know, so what do you think? Uh, this is, the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood, yeah. but against principalities and power, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Uh, you know, the Church of England is under tremendous pressure. But it, uh, I, actually, I saw quite a lot of things recently like that. And curiously enough, I took interest to really search, to do some research. And also, the, when I look at it, uh, the, what I discovered that, was that the Church of England in their attempt to build all inclusive or what they call comprehensive church under their some I saw that they say comprehensive church, you know, which means they had there are some of them who believe in Catholic tradition, they are still part of Church of England. There are some who believe in reformed, that's another stream, there are some evangelical, there are some but at a point they allow something which I believe that was the greatest mystery. Another stream, they call it Libra stream. Liberal mm. Christian. These are the ones that are rising up. Don't give Satan a crack. Yeah. He will widen it. So when I look at that, in the attempt to build all inclusive or comprehensive, you know, I saw it's the last one they admitted. They call it liberal Christian. So they are the one that is causing problem there. So wow. why? That thing is been <laughs> all that we are talking about secular is to secularize the entire church. But there are wonderful men and women of going church of England. Yes. Fire burning, carrying fire. And we are going to see revival. Don't be surprised that revival is going to come even from Church of England. Mm. Because there are some people that are burning, some bishops, some vicars, they are really in there. So that is what I discovered. It is because in, we want to build all inclusive, comprehensive church. They brought in Libra. It is, it's the same thing in Catholic. There is another, another one in Catholic as well that they brought. So even though the Pope is there, but the real one, they are somewhere that control the, the Praise Pope. God. <laughs> I know recently I saw a video of, a, of, a, of a, a, an Anglican priest in Uganda. And he said clearly, he said, we have not departed from the church, from the Anglican communion. Yeah. He said they are the ones that departed, <laughs> but they've departed from the word of God. Yeah. So they are the ones that have to repent and come back, and we are praying for them. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because this is warfare. It's, it's not, we don't just look at them as if, no, we, we are going to miss it if we look at them. But we have to look at the enemy that is working under them because they have allowed the enemy to take advantage. Lest he take advantage. We should be aware of the devices, and that's what happened. That's All of us, we need to learn lessons individually and church leaders. Mm. So in view of the discussion we've had so far, what do you think the church needs to do at this juncture? Mm. Uh, 
nothing happens without prayer. But the first thing I want us to say is that the church itself, whether irrespective of the denomination, we need to go, we need to repent of one thing. And what we need to repent of is our conscious complacency of allowing the sec secularism to penetrate so much into the church affairs, whether you call yourself charismatic or whatever, it's all there. So for the past 50, 60 years downward, they have been putting this thing into law. The Christian were there. It's the time we're supposed to rise up, we will not rise up. The time we're supposed to talk, we will not talk. Now it's already gone. So we need, we have to repent consciously of what I, I, I describe as conscious complacency. That's why the, then the prayer bit is very important, but we have to be strategic in our prayer. Because Holy Spirit has to dictate the prayer for us. And I believe as the Holy Spirit dictate, by the grace of God, we are going to reverse this thing one by one. The Lord told me that because the agenda has been there up to 60 plus now, he said it cannot go beyond 70. And remember, when Daniel was trying to pray, the 70 years of captivity was about a few years to expire. When he discovered that, ah, the Lord has said that when 70 years expire, it will get us out of it. So he didn't wait for the 70 years to expire. Mm -hmm. He just picked it up. So the Lord has spoken to me as a prophet, said, Johnson, you know, shouting, making loud to church, loud and clear to the church that I'm able to reverse it if we can start on in Tense prophetic prayer wow. along that line is going to reverse it because it cannot go beyond 70 years. And we are getting to that point. So we can reverse it by the grace. So the prayer is very important. Repentance is very important. And not keeping quiet. Another thing is that not keeping quiet when we see such law coming on. We can rise so it is our legitimate right to protest peaceful protest and thank God for Jesus Christ who knew you know how to use the right word you know at the right time also sound doctrinal teaching is another thing we need to go back to the book what are we preaching when God gave me the that that the, the last book that I wrote he says some this is the message for now this is this this is the message that will be a precursor to my second coming the message of the ministry of the cross and power in the blood of jesus he said this message is out of the pulpit and until it comes back we are not going to see the move of the holy spirit we are not so seats we are not going to see the glory that we are praying for because even god himself he cannot do as much on the earth without leveraging upon the power of the cross mm. and the blood of Jesus Christ. Wow. wow <laughs> the Lord. Even when you talk about peaceful protest, I remember how the woman just this week or so was praying outside the abortion clinic. Quietly. Quietly. <laughs> and the police came. <laughs> Isn't that a peaceful protest? It's a peaceful protest, but because of our uh, conscious complacency and quietness for all this year, we will pay dearly for it. Yeah. Because there's no, no, don't let anybody say we will escape. It. No, the prayer is not, the, the persecution, we can't escape it. It's, it's there already. The court is full of, you know, secular judges, secular barristers. Even if you carry your case there, mm -hmm. they've already have a mindset. Yeah. Thank God we have very strong and powerful judicial system here all over the world, they know all. But the fact about secular state, they've already trained the guys. That mm -hmm. <laughs> But you know, uh, when Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh and he explained to Pharaoh how it should be done, Pharaoh now said, <laughs> since you're the one that has the solution to this problem, yeah. why don't you fix it? Since God has revealed to you what is going on and how to fix it, so what are you going to do about it? Now, there's what I call national prophetic prayer movement that God has already uh, given me the assignment to. Uh, in that, we are trusting God for what I call prophets, pastors, pastorship. In different regions, if we can have group of pastors and they say, prophet, come here. Let us pray. Let us design strategy of prayer to dislodge the ruling power in this city or in this region. It's one of the way forward. Another thing is that the word, the, that, that word I mentioned to you, the mystery, the message, and the power of the cross, God has given me as a mandate that wherever I go, it should be the message I should focus upon until leaders we focus on it because that is where it began. And this is where I go to. And Jesus Christ spoke to me. He said, what give me audacity to come and uh, to come back to this earth to face Antichrist and to establish a new kingdom is based upon what I did on the cross. Mm. So that is how important the power of the cross, what Jesus did on the cross, is so important to heaven and the earth. He said that is the reason why I will have the authority 
to do what I will come and do to establish a new kingdom when I come. So if the heaven depend on thee, God himself, there is a bucket of the blood of Jesus Christ in front on the Ark of, Ark of Covenant. God has taken me to that once to, to let me see that little man, I, I see it every day. But the church, we are not conscious of it every day. But God is conscious of everything. And every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, he has to land upon the golden bucket of that blow. I saw, I watched all this thing in vision. And uh, it turned to fire before it turned down to heaven. <laughs> wow. Now, you know, you're talking about uh, these things, how we, you're going to move. What I want to say is, is that whenever you're ready to launch out and you have dates in mind and venue, please let us know. So we can get you on a program like this to discuss it because I know there are a lot of our viewers mm -hmm. who would like to be part of what you do. Yeah. But in the meantime, have you got any books that explain this power of the cross and the blood and everything? Yes, on Amazon. I have uh, most of my books uh, that they are on the part. There's one, The Power in the Blood of Jesus. There's another one, the latest one, which is you know, the cross of Jesus Christ as the mo most important, mo the most important and keys of the kingdom of heaven. There is nothing that we cannot unlock yeah. when we come by the power because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. So you can go to Amazon and say, Prophet Johnson, the power and the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus Christ, because the only key, mm. hallelujah, he said, I will give, on, I will place upon his shoulder the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatsoever. So that key was laid upon Jesus Christ on the day he was crucified, and that was the cross. Because Isaiah has already prophesied, Isaiah 22, 40, 22, 42, 22, say, I will lay upon his shoulder the keys of the kingdom. Wow. Nobody knew that it was the cross. So but mm -hmm. graphically on that day, when he was carrying the keys of the kingdom, yeah. he was carrying to Gogota. Yeah. That is very important. You can go on, 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 on Amazon, you are going to get it. And I want to encourage all the leaders, let's get in touch. The ministry, the office of a prophet is very important yes. because God will always speak to them. When we partner together, we can run conferences together in your region, in your area, in our city. By that, we can dislodge the act. Because in every city, when God says you are going to be, this National Prophetic Prayer Movement is to go from city to city. Actually, we should have been in Plymouth last Saturday. We announced it, but we couldn't because of the weather. Mm. So what we did that we called for a special prayer for Plymouth. Yeah. On Sat, we did it. Amen. Uh, you know, to call people around the nation, let's pray for Plymouth. So we are going from city to city as the Holy Spirit will lead us by the grace of God. I just want to, sorry if you don't mind, yeah. I just want to read it. Psalm 33, 33 10 to 12. The Lord brings the counsel of the nation to nothing, He makes the plan of the people of no effect. Yeah. The counsel of the Lord shall stand forever, the plan of His heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation. United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's only the true Christianity that you are lifted up. There is no any other way to be lifted up again than to come in back. There is no any other thing any government can do. The best prime minister, the best policy, it's not going to work. It was through Christianity, the gospel that God lifted up this nation. Yes. So if we are going to be great again, we mo there is no solution. We must come back to the church. The church must rise up before that. Hallelujah. So, mm -hmm. and the Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9 to 10 says, The Lord then put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nation and over the kingdom. We are to root out all this secular agenda. We are to pull down in Jesus' name. We are to destroy in Jesus' name. We are to throw down to build a new United Kingdom. Yes. We can do it in Amen. the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And Amen. Father, we thank you. We can do it because you've given us the power based upon yes. what you have done. Say, go ye into the world. We have the authority in your name. We have the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you empower us. Our eye of understanding be enlightened and envisioned across the land. All the wonderful men and women of God, intercessors that are crying day and night, strengthen us and mm -hmm. Us once yes, again Lord. so that we will rise up to the time until we find ourselves at the ancient well of our founding mm. father, the well of righteousness that exalts a nation. And we know we can do it, and by your grace and, and power, we will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, Amen. we thank Amen. God. That, it reminds me of how Ezra 
went to intercede on behalf of the nation. He repented on their behalf. Yeah, that and is he it. Interceded that is the way behalf. forward. The first thing to acknowledge that yes. is the church that has the problem. It's not the government. Praise yeah. God. Thank you so much, <laughs> man of God. Thank you. And I remember Joshua and Caleb. They said, yes, there are giants in the land. Oh, yeah. But with God on <laughs> our side, That's we right. will take it yeah. in Jesus' name. You know what? <laughs> Pastor, man of God, a prophet, Akifenwa, I thank God for your life. And you're coming back anyway by the grace of God. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for watching and please spread this video to as many as possible. And whatever you do, don't touch that dial. This is the channel to be and it's called Revelation TV, The Finest. Amen.